Welcome back to Kind of Funny's DCEU in Review. That's right. We are ranking, reviewing, and recapping every single project in the DCEU. Of course, I'm Tim Geddes, and I'm joined by the Nitro Rifle, Andy Cortez. I wasn't on the last episode. I just realized oh. that. On Suicide Squad? This one, I was back in Texas. Remember that? Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Well, we'll talk yeah. about your rankings later, of course. Mm-hmm. But joining us first is the big dog, Kevin Koala. What's up, dude? I, I was Not on the much. last episode. You were there, yeah. Mm-hmm. So the there. Suicide was good. Was the insane. Suicide? You know what, yeah. what the fuck? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying that I, I ranked it highly. I think that sounds right, right? Yeah. Probably Suicide Squad was good. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. And, of course, we have the producer slash seducer, Nick Serpino, who was uh, all, also there for the Suicide Suicide. I can't even mess it up. Ah, it's a whole fucking thing. What else? Suicide Go squad. for it, Nick. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Very excited to talk about Peacemaker again. I get tired. In the words of uh, one Captain America, I could do this all day. I love this mm-hmm. show. Mm-hmm. And the big daddy himself, Greg Miller. Tim, guess what emoji I am? Yeah, yeah, that that one. The That's winky the one. tongue. Nailed one. it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Audio listeners, he stuck his tongue out and, and, and winked his eye. There you go, Andy. Come on. <laughs> if you're gonna try to, if you're gonna try to get out there, do play by play of <laughs> big league baseball. You better get it right. All right. <laughs> of course, this is kind of funny's in review, where each and every week we rank, recap, and review different movie franchises. Right now, uh, we're kind of in a weird place in between a whole bunch of things. So we're returning to DCEU with Peacemaker. Uh, we also put up an MCU in preview episode earlier this week, and next week we'll be turn be returning to the MCU uh, world with the Marvel one shots that you can watch on Disney oh. Plus. We're going to be watching all of the one shots. We're not actually going to rank them against everything because it's kind of weird. I just wanted all of us to to watch them because they are canon. They are all available in one place for the very first time. Um, so that's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to be watching all of them except for the um, All Hail the King one that led into Iron Man three because uh, we already watched that and talked about it back on our Iron Man three rewatch uh, that we did. That you can go check out. That's going to be a lot of fun. And then the week after that, we are returning to Sony's Spider Man universe of Spider Man characters uh with morbius in review that's sure to be an electrifying time for all of us uh but today we're talking about dceu in review of course you can get it on youtube.com slash kind of funny or roosterteeth.com you can also get it as a podcast by searching your favorite podcast service for kind of funny in review we'll be right there for you if you wanted to get the show ad free and you want to watch live as we record it you got to go to patreon.com slash kind of funny, just like our Patreon producers, Molecule, Gordon McGuire, Fargo Brady, and Pranksy have all done. Today, we're brought to you by me on and DoorDash, but I'll get to that later. Before we even get into Peacemaker, of course, we talked about episode by episode breakdowns over on the screencast. I wanted to just give a state of the union when it comes to the DCEU. Everybody Last settle week. in right here. Wow. Yeah, man. Uh, there was a, a ton of shakeups in this world, in this universe, if you will, multiverse soon to be um, in DC land, where a lot of release dates shifted. A lot of things kind of took the spots of others. And if I'm being completely honest with you, I don't believe that it's the end of it. I think we're going to get even more change ups soon. Some movies were pushed forward like eight months, some back even more. Like it's a to say it's a disaster might be a little hyperbolic, but it is interesting to see. It's upsetting, is what it is. It's an injustice, Tim. The Flash is the one we all want. I don't, I don't, thank you. Flash is the one we want. We don't want this goddamn freaking we get out of here with shazam really 2 great, Tim. don't bring in shazam 2 yet really you know what i mean give me flash and also did you mm. see that then it screwed up the director of flash's joke because they changed the suits in shazam and he said this screws everything and twitter he said this screws everything up if when they were gonna if anybody was gonna ask me why they changed the suits and we don't talk about it i was gonna say barry messed up the timeline and that would have been great but as usual warner brothers in their pencil pushing bean counters can't stay out of fucking art's way art is there and they just want to fucking ruin it they don't understand it andy they give me michael keaton in the fucking bat suit what they need is that one big meeting where kevin feige sat everybody down and said listen up everyone listen up it's that thing i've heard i've heard it time and time again oh you know homogenization the monopolization <laughs> everything coming together under one roof is such a bad thing at this right. point disney just fucking buy dc comics just buy dc get it under there and just fucking right. fix it just do it right go to henry cavill and apologize for the scripts he gave him <laughs> and let him make another superman movie apologize yeah to his whole family honestly yeah like, the whole yeah. cavill estate yeah 100 <laughs> percent. yeah the yeah. cavill's is 
Thank exactly. You, <laughs> uh, this is the energy that we are bringing here, of course. I wanted to, though, kind of boil this down uh, to the simplest bit, which is just to update you guys on what's going on in the DCEU. Because, of course, the Batman came out a couple weeks ago to critical acclaim. We did our in-review of that. But that was in the Batman franchise that we did. That is separate from the DCEU. There's a ton. Of, I know. I know. But it is what it is. No, uh, it, makes they did that. it makes sense, though. But there's also a bunch of spinoff shows that they are announcing and then retracting and then changing. There was going to be a, a Gotham PD show. It sounds like that might be changing into an Arkham show now. We'll see what all happens there. But that is so, so far away. If I wanted to know, blah, blah, blah. Uh, DCEU, though, only has one announced spinoff. Uh, like, not show, but, uh, well, I guess we have Peacemaker. But we know more of that's coming. But there's one HBO-only movie that they're working on that is still kind of up in the air. It's slated for 2022. We'll see where that, that shakes out. But otherwise, we do have a couple theatrically released movie dates lined up. The next being Black Adam, which is now October 21st, 2022. That is The Rock's uh, introduction into the DCEU. What's the phrase that they keep saying, Greg? The power dynamic and the DC, the power hierarchy and the DCEU is about to shift forever. Rock, you know it better than anybody. I fucking love you, brother. DJ, we go way back. Fucking stop saying this line, all right? I'm so goddamn sick of hearing this. You know what I mean? Just, it's been fucking years. And then it went quiet for a long time because it seemed like the DCEU was about to implode and you wouldn't have to be a part of it. And then what happened? Billy Batson's stupid ass had to come along and make a Shazam a hit. Now I got to get a fucking second Shazam before I get the goddamn Flash and see Michael Keaton in the goddamn bat suit. And don't even get me started on what this does to the Batgirl. Don't wear the Batgirl movie, right? Yeah, Michael Keaton's in that. Bet we can't have that till Barry fucking shits up the timeline. Fucking goddamn it. Yes, exactly. So Black Adam, October 21st, and then December 16th, 2022, we have Shazam Fury of the Gods, uh, the same day that Avatar 2 comes out. So we'll see which Battle of the Titans uh, ends up taking that one. Uh, but then Batgirl, like Greg was just talking about, that is the HBO Max movie uh, that features uh, Commissioner Gordon, J.K. Simmons, uh, which is going to be pretty cool. And yeah, Michael Keaton's going to be in that. It is slated for 2022 with the same team behind Bad Boys for Life. Uh, which is pretty exciting, but I highly, highly doubt we're going to get that Can't do it. Uh, in 2022. Can't right? put the car in front of the horse, exactly. Kevin. Kevin, how well you know horses? That's how well I know the DCEU. And so when you put it all on fucking Barry's shoulder to go do this, introduce Supergirl, oh, remake the Justice League that. with her and Batgirl, you can't fucking have Michael Keaton floating around with J.K. Simmons. No one's going to understand what the fuck's going on. It's not fair. Do you remember when Barry me. Allen uh, threatened the the KKK group from his local... Um, neighborhood. Do you remember this? See this video? Talking about Ezra Actor. Miller? Ezra Miller, yeah. Did you see this video? Oh, I was like, I don't Are you talking about him as the character? Or do you mean no, him? No, real life. I, I, I meant him, yeah. No, no I don't remember. He, Why didn't you leave with that? Like, you make me look like life? a fucking moron. Like, I don't remember. I've seen all yeah. the deleted you, scenes. Then you come out. You remember when fucking... You, you remember when Barry Allen Barry ran Allen. up on the KKK? No, I don't remember oh, when Barry was, Allen ran up against That was a great story. That's the kind of stories they should be fucking telling in the DCU. Instead, what you got? Bean counters, moving shit around, moving shit around, moving it, moving it. Not to mention... You're going to tell me, and first off, don't even get me started on the fact that what year of the DCEU is this? And they're proving once again they don't know what the fuck they're doing. They don't have a plan. They're cha- well, You know what? We're going to make a Gotham PD show. It's going to be great. Okay, Gotham Central is a great book. Guess what? Now it's an Arkham show. Okay, well, that's one way to go about it. You're going to put that Joker guy in there too? The one from the fucking movie? No, we're like, it's like, what are we talking about? What are we doing? But back to it. The problem, I mean, then you get, is mm-hmm. I bet you, lot. Greg, that I lot. bet you. That if they made the KKK the bad guys in a DCU project, we would probably rank it number one. But I don't That's know. We're woke. Maybe we're maybe woke. we'll have to to wait till the end of this episode to to find out how that goes. Uh, but anyways, Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom comes out March seventeenth. That's where I was going. Remember, they put out this fucking thing. They had the balls at the beginning of the year. Put out, the world needs heroes. All these people fucking. And then they don't even have that. These movies coming out. That, dude, you say the beginning of the year, Greg. That was the Super Bowl. That was weeks ago that they did this The World Needs Hope shit and promoted all these movies that then a week later they were like, you know what, gotcha. We're shifting everything. None of that shit's coming out this year. Uh, Aquaman and Lost Kingdom, March 17, 2023. It was originally going to be right. this December. Uh, my man. And my then man. 
the flash the one that we're all looking forward to the most june 23rd 2023 and then following that up oh i guess there is one more other hbo max one blue beetle uh featuring the main kid from cobra kai which is very exciting to most of us here greg miller what's up real quick uh you know i've been ranting and raving here a bit and i've made it very clear that i don't give a shit about anything with the, the flash and i'll see all these other movies and maybe i'll enjoy them, maybe i won't uh but you said we're the one we're all most excited for is that true is everybody on board with the flash being the one they're most excited for or like because nick seems like one of these idiots you'd be like oh shazam 2 is gonna be a great popcorn flick and i'm gonna get to see mary like aquaman stuff. 2 uh, could be pretty well pretty pretty fun. i'm not excited for any of these movies i, I gotta be honest i'm not like this, 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 this is such a hodgepodge of, of poorly planned movies that we've have been having to deal with for so long. And then you get Peacemaker and you're like, how did they not screw this up? Like what, what's going on? How did this happen? And all these other movies are still being made. And that's, I don't know. I, that's why I, I, I am excited to talk more about this because it is a very positive and really well done DC property that I feel like that people should be looking at and going like, okay, maybe we should take some notes from this one and let you know really good creators just kind of have a plan and go in there and execute now nick i know we were dancing around this a little bit and kind of mentioned it but like you remember that the flash is returning to michael keaton's bat cave yes i remember that whole thing and it's going to be very nostalgic but let's be perfectly honest it's going to be horrible like it's, it's <laughs> going to be bad it's going to this none will of this be the makes one sense. that fixes yeah. it nick there's <laughs> Well, They're bringing guys, Michael I mean, Keaton back talk, to the DCEU. The They're idea of Ben Affleck the away. They're erasing Superman. That's, I think I think Ben Affleck work. punted them away. Actually, Kevin, this isn't a this isn't fucking divorce court proceedings. All right, I'm telling you what's happening in the narrative. All right, but isn't it though? Ben Affleck's in the movie. He came crawling back. You know what I mean? They're like, here's a Twix bar. He's like, I'll do anything. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm look. in love with J-Lo again. And that's just a great story, everybody. I'm very excited. <laughs> to that. If, we can, if we can drop all of our characters for a second, Andy, take off your fake glasses. What we're here to say in reality as your friends <laughs> is that it is great that J-Lo and Ben Affleck are together again. I, I'm very excited about it. Time. For a She's second, I, I zoned out. For a second, I thought you were talking about the movie <laughs> "Marry Me," which is now available for purchase on on demand for twenty dollars. Yes. yes, it is. Did you purchase um, it already? Is that how you know so much about it? No, I want to. I'm not going to spend money on that movie. I will. Right. Right. That's I'll, the best story in the DC. But I'm not going to yeah. spend that much money. Um, no, I mean it's it, all this is super confusing and it's unfortunate because it's just again like I think I think the flash resetting stuff is going to be fine for people who are hardcore DC fans, but like for for Fairweather fans are people who are just randomly going to movies to see Batman. They're like, whatever. I, I don't know what the hell's going on here. I, I mean, is, I think I think that they're smart enough to understand, like especially because like, oh what? No, um, no way. The home. last, yeah, the last Spider Man universe. Yeah, post Spider Man universe. Like that. Like we've been introduced to multiverse with characters that we you hadn't seen in a long time. So like that concept makes sense. And also, no one remembers who he is. So it's like, oh, the world's changed that you know and like people accept and understand what that means you know so i think yeah. that they're going to be ready for it so my just worry my that, worry with it though is like you're you're you know you're tearing down a building but the foundation is still bad right and you're going to start building up on top of that really what mm -hmm. they need to do is call it what it is and start over they need to scrap all these projects and start over with a plan and or let matt reeves go forward with whatever this new universe is and and push forward with that but like and we just don't do the universe anymore we tried half acidly. We let all of these fucking executives and bean counters in the room. Maybe just, we just stop. Maybe everybody just gets to do whatever well, they want to do. It yeah, sounds like that, a marriage is just like, you know what? Maybe we just give, you know, we tried to make this work. Let's just okay. move on. Let's move on to greener pastures. But, yeah. but I think that's the thing. most interesting thing about this is like looking at this slate of release dates, which again is inevitably going to change. But it is weird that it went from the Flash being one of the earlier projects we were going to see, uh, getting it getting punted to June 23rd. It is the last theatrical release date movie we have for the DCU so far. And that is weird because so you're going to give us a couple movies before essentially resetting things like i think that that is uh not great and it that goes back to the bean counter shit that greg's talking about where it's like this just seems like doing things to do things just because it's a like well, obli obligated as opposed to like having a story to tell well you've spent a lot of money doing it and that that was what it comes down to right as you've already filmed these movies you've spent a lot of marketing money you've got contracts with actors like it's not it's like it's not like people just go you know we're gonna make a flashpoint movie right now and then just tomorrow it happens this shit's been years in the planning that's why they need to start planning now to, well, to take all this stuff down and redo it 
Yeah, I mean, you say that, but remember, The Flash at this point was originally slated for 2017. <laughs> so it's like, the, it has been in the works for a long time, and now it's like finally coming out. It's like, oh, too little, too late. Greg Miller. There's nothing I want to do more than hang out with you guys and talk about this, right? But mm -hmm. I feel like we got off to the races in a bad way. I feel like mm -hmm. there's some bad mojo in here, and we mm -hmm. need to be honest, real people again. Andy, wipe the fake glasses off your fake fucking face. Step fake. away from this. Just step away from it for a second. You know, everybody chill out. I'm going to step away from the computer for a second and be real. I'm going to be real. Why would we have a sponsor like DoorDash? Because I'm Greg Miller and I use DoorDash too many times. I need to go get my DoorDash order. I need to clear my mind for a second. Kevin, you're going to think I can't hear you, but these are loud. So if you talk shit right now, sir, no I will hear you all right. Look at this. He has no idea. No, he can't hear shit. I told you, he First didn't fucking hear shit. That was incredible. <laughs> I just want everyone to fucking understand how yeah. great that was. This did, is, uh... did, did Ezra Miller actually choke someone? Yeah, yeah. he choked a woman. Yeah, yeah he, he choked did. a woman. But like in, in a in, in a, public, like, in not a public like a space. fun, like not a fun no. Way. No, 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 it was very no. violent. And, the, it and was that very just violent. kind of got brushed over, huh? No, no, it's bad. I just don't think it's brought up enough. Like I think that uh, I, I think it's an issue that people don't talk about enough. But mm. again, this KKK video I was talking about. Look it up because it's we, him. Oh, it's yeah, him what? threatening a local chapter. Uh, and is it's he like dressed him, as a Flash? No, no, it's just him in a car being like, "Hey, you all know what you're doing, by the way. Like, I I know what y'all are doing. I can't, Andy. I can't with these glasses. I can't. <laughs> move, Andy. Move your head just a little bit because that's what it's when your eye starts. That's when, yeah, yeah it's, that's when, it's when it gets off and it looks it really, really bad. Starts to, starts the I joke really notice, starts to land. I didn't notice it. <laughs> I heard Greg say it. Um, do you have the video? Because I'm having like I'm seeing a yeah, lot let's of watch articles. this KKK video. If, if somebody's dunking on the KKK, that's the kind of video we need to watch. Those it, the world needs heroes. I was told. <laughs> now I'm only getting two of them. It, it's pretty. It, it's like you know it's I wouldn't recommend down, watching it. Like... Yeah, yeah. He, he he basically said like, hey, you know, you got your weapons. He he was just he was like threatening them. I don't know if I like. I don't know if what I want to say will get flagged in a YouTube like algorithm. Be like, oh, this video is saying this, so like, let's take it down or whatever. I'm pretty sure we already got flagged when you said KKK. That's one of those oh, okay. fun buzzwords that uh, makes this get delisted. But um, I, I wonder if Ezra Miller knows that he's actually not the Flash in real life because that's a super dangerous thing to be doing to people. And uh, maybe maybe there's a better way to go about that. Maybe you just use your platform to talk about that instead of facing off against real people who could stab you in the face. <laughs> it, it was it was well, pretty, it was a pretty wild doing. video. It was a pretty wild video. Yeah, he was oh, just I like, he said, I thought, I, from what Andy made it sound like, he walked up to the local chapter no, of the KKK no. in New York. It was, was like, like, a, it was like a vlog that he he like, or not vlog, but like selfie. He video. was like, it was like a video mess. It was basically like justice. Good. Like it yeah. was kind of like one of those videos, <laughs> and he was like, I'm with like you. You all should take your asses out before we do it. Okay, bye. And he like, it, but it was it's wild. It was like this happened over Christmas break. <laughs> like, what's going on right was now? Was this like him trying to save face after he like pushed that fan down or whatever? Remember that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were just Another talking video. about that while you we're left. We chose that. Oh, my apologies. My apologies. I couldn't hear. I, I did. The, the, it didn't carry as well as I thought it would. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't hear the headphones I, as soon as, as soon as you, <laughs> you put the headphones down, I started talking shit. We started shit. talking shit. Yeah. yeah. First yeah. off, Nick, I know you hear. did. All right. I know you did, and I would expect nothing less. This is why you're my favorite golden P. All right. Mm -hmm. But Kevin, I don't think you did it, and I think you never would do it. Tim, what's a golden <laughs> P? I'll tell you what, I got some energy in a weird way today, guys. It's not the normal <laughs> energy right? in a weird it's not way. The normal <laughs> section. You know what I mean? Macho man. <laughs> today we are talking about Peacemaker. Uh, it had eight. Episode. But what if we weren't? Oh, yeah. What if we were just an hour and a half? Whatever. What if we were just talking about the like, state of the union? Peacemaker's number one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, it really is that simple. Uh, but Peacemaker with a runtime of eight episodes released on January 13th through <laughs> February 17th. That's the runtime. Eight episodes. Eight <laughs> episodes, y'all. Yeah, you know, I want everyone to understand. Back in the day when WandaVision first came out, there was a lot of question. There was a lot of hullabaloo, Greg. What are they going to do for a review? Are they really going to do the plot for the entire thing? Are they going to really do the math on the runtime? Are they going to include the credits for that runtime? Because they include the credits runtime when they do movies. And I was at a standstill 
morally and ethically as mm -hmm. an entertainer for mm -hmm. you all what do i do i don't know so i want everyone to know when i gave the runtime for wandavision falcon and winter soldier loki i personally went in and i watched the episodes and i skimmed until the credits started and i did the math i manually added it up i ain't doing that shit the runtime is eight episodes that's yeah, what it is you it. motherfuckers you're gonna take that and you're gonna like it it was released january 13th and february 17th 2022 on hbo max it was directed and written by james gunn he did five out of eight of the episodes uh in terms of directing but he wrote all of them he wrote the entire first season in eight weeks during the covid quarantine out of pure boredom uh not actually believing the series would ever get picked up this was during the editing process of the suicide squad um <laughs> God, there's so much energy going on. I hate on this when they show. talk to each other. I know. They're slapping each other. Right I now. know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, there's just no. nothing. It's that so. sound, Andy. <laughs> 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 I got open Photoshop. Oh, no. Like, no. <laughs> I don't like Greg opening Photoshop. <laughs> oh, <laughs> God. Sorry, Tim. Sorry to <laughs> Oh, no. It's, don't be sorry to me. Be sorry to everyone else. Yeah, be sorry yeah, to the I'll audio listeners. watching this right around the time we started talking about the KKK. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so uh, the music was... Uh, uh, the, the the key music that we're, I want to talk about is done by Wigwam. Uh, the intro song, Do You Want to Taste It?, which became a cultural phenomenon over on TikTok, uh, resulting in it coming in at number one on the top rock charts for the very awesome. first time. You'll love to Makes see it. It's so damn cool. The sense. song was originally released in 2009, uh, but we finally, justice has been served. Peacemaker um, James Gunn. Do you think James Gunn is like, hey, give us back our licensing fee? Like you no all way. are, you all are making money right now, man. James Gunn is a booster. He's stoked that people he, that this happens. I, I think there you go. I think uh, yeah, he, he he was tweeting all about it, right? And I think it was also like uh, Wigwam's uh, uh, like management company dropped him like the day before or whatever. This yeah. uh, it started airing. He's like, fuck them. <laughs> James Gunn loves sticking it to the man, Andy. It's the best. Uh, another fun thing there is um, they are a Norwegian glam rock band, Wigwam. Uh, they came pl in ninth place in the 2005 Eurovision Song Contest. Wow. So that's, that's pretty cool. Thing. It's a, oh yes, oh yes. Man. Man. I thought it was just a really bad Rachel McAdams Will Ferrell movie. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't that bad. I mean, you know, it wasn't Blades of Glory, but it was all right. Well, don't. I mean, it wasn't off, Blades of Glory, first which off, is Kevin, an excellent no, film. Which Kevin is an excellent is right. film. If you're good, if you're gonna hold something as the benchmark of quality, Blades of Glory is pretty. That in the heat. Yeah. Oh um, Blades of Glory is so good. The Sandy Bullock movie ever made. So normally I talk don't about the box Mr. office. Geniality is a movie, okay? And what about the one where she was in space? I like that one. Gravity, speed. Nah, that's too serious. Or speed's a good one too. Speed three. Gravity. Speed space station. Sorry, Tim. Normally I talk about box office, but since there's not a box office for this because it's a TV show, I will just drop some fun facts. Each episode received higher viewership than the last, with the season season finale breaking the record for highest single day viewership of an HBO Max original episode. So. Pretty cool stuff there. Uh, and because of that, a second season was ordered with Gunn set to write and direct every single episode of it. That's great. Yes. That's the way yes, it should it be. Is. Let's start with you, Nick. It's been a couple weeks removed yeah. from Peacemaker. We've had a whole bunch of different shows now on the of the superhero variety. We, obviously, so many different universes of movies we've talked about. Where are you at now? Yeah, I'm still at the same place I was before, man. You know, we just watched uh, and did a deep dive into the trailer for season three of The Boys. And it's it's one of those things where I'm like, I didn't realize how much. First off, I love The Boys. It's a great show. But I think Peacemaker hits on that level for me, man. Like, it's it's one of those. I'm like, I saw that trailer. I'm like, I miss he, I miss Peacemaker. I miss The Boys. I like the more R-rated adult style approach that James Gunn. Uh, and the team that does the boys have to this material. I think it's it hits right on my alley. It's my kind of twisted, fucked up humor. Um, and at the heart of it, I think it's backed by really good storytelling and really, really good character arc, specifically John Cena's uh, character arc. I I think this movie. Oh, is that what a golden P is? Yeah, that's a golden P to me, Nick. That's okay. what everybody wanted. What made me laugh so hard? Nick just asked, "What is a golden P?" And I had to make one in Photoshop. Okay. It wasn't you made. Oh, it. oh, this. Is, oh my god. I didn't know I could get more mad at this bit, but here it is. Here it is. You had to Photoshop 
peas gold and this is this is your gold not, this looks like, gold, like fucking lime lemonade cream. like yeah, yeah like any listen can you this isn't this the one we're going please? to print with this isn't the one we're going to print with this mm, is okay. me in a in a, in a gif trying to show you what it is all right yeah gold it's, um, very, it's, it's tough james color. gunn drawing storyboards and exactly on a napkin, you know? Perfect. Fucking Tim would come into Picasso studio and just start fucking tipping over all the jars he was working in. <laughs> That's how you do it with you. You don't let an artist work. All the jars he was working in. Yeah. <laughs> I watched Ghostbusters Afterlife last night. There's a lot of jars in it. A lot of canned peaches. <laughs> A lot of jarred peaches. Um, to, sorry, back to my point though, Tim. I, this this to me is one of the one of the rare shows that I'm like, I need another season of this. This is appointment viewing. This is this is a must watch if you are a fan of the uh, the comic book genre. And and that's great. Honestly, I think that's a step in the right direction as far as like the TV properties are concerned. Because as you know, like a lot of the Star Wars TV shows, I haven't been that that hot on. And a lot of the Marvel shows are good, but I don't need. I don't, I don't feel the need for another season of any of those. If there's another season, I'll totally watch them and they're enjoyable while it's happening, but I don't need a Loki season two. I don't really need a Falcon and Winter Soldier season two. I don't really need... You don't need a I don't, Loki season two. Yeah, it's fine. I mean, if it That's happens, I'll cooking. watch it, but I'm not I, clamoring I'm, I'm, I'm for there, it, right? I'm there, I'm there with me. You know, like Peacemaker, like the, when they announced it, I was like, excellent. I have something to look forward to. I'm really looking forward to this. John Cena and the team and James Gunn and all, all the supporting cast and crew did a great job. We, they should get another season of the show. Um, and I feel the same way about the boys. I'm, I'm glad that's continuing. Those are my, those are my two, uh, sort of like benchmark shows right there. Andy, last time, uh, we talked about Peacemaker. I feel like you were the lowest out of all of us on the show. You still seem to really enjoy it, but I think that episode to episode, you were the one that was always kind of like, ah, this one wasn't for me. Where are you at now? Um, I, much like Nick, I'm kind of in the same spot. I think it's, uh, I think it's a good TV show. I don't think, um, I don't think I enjoy James Gunn Unleashed. I think uh, I think maybe let's just like I said in that one episode, let's tone back some of the humor because uh, I don't think all of it is hitting. Um, uh, I think it's like a heat check for James Gunn. You know, Steph Curry, Tim, when he's on a run, he's just he just throws threes up from wherever. Right. He's usually hitting them with James Gunn. It's like, OK, let's maybe you're not Steph Curry right now. Let's kind of like you know, put a leash around uh, the those those jokes, because I just don't think a lot of them worked. Um, and I don't think that the storytelling is, was as good as or as engaging as something like The Boys. Um, but I still think it's one of the better DC products out there by far. And that that says both <laughs> that says a lot about both things, about not only Peacemaker, but the DCEU as a whole. Um, and I think the show got better as it went on. That was my that was my issue with it was that I just feel like it was kind of I feel like it was kind of slow near the beginning. Like in that first episode hit, I was like, damn, that was great. I want more of that. And I just feel like it kind of took a while to kind of find itself. Um, and I again, I think it did eventually get stronger as it went on, though. Um, but yeah, I, I I'm I will watch season two uh, of this. But unlike what Nick was saying, I don't think that I'd prefer watching this over something like a Loki season two. Um, or no, I don't want to say, or even a WandaVision because WandaVision kind of lost itself near the end of it for me. But yeah, I think it's a good TV show. I just don't think it's, uh, like the best product that they've put out so far. I think Suicide Squad is still probably my number one by James Gunn's Suicide Squad. <laughs> Reiterating. Miller. Andy, I don't think you need to preface that, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's something you need to really like. No, it's, no, it's jumping in for, uh, Jared Leto. <laughs> yeah. Um... I stand by everything I said in the individual reviews and how much I loved the show and how much I was getting more and more hype for the show and how I felt it built on itself so well. I do think this is something incredibly special. I do think it's the number one thing in the DCEU. Uh, it'd be fun to take it up one day against uh, MCU just to see where we think it would rank there because I know we've always talked about like, you know, this kind of DCEU is always like double A ball to the major league that is the MCU. Um, however, this show I think uh, succeeds where so many don't. And I'm trying to. As we've had this conversation, I don't think I've put the lens on of comparing it to the other shows that have come before. But I would think this is – I don't want to say easily because I'm I, I'm sure I'm forgetting something. But I would think easily my favorite of any show we've watched and done the episode-by-episode episode review of it for superheroes. Um, it's the one that I, I – how many weeks has it been since the finale? And I still think about all the time. And I still listen to the soundtrack all the time. And I am anxious for 
when Jen is finally like, all right, cool, let's start it again. Let's do episode one. She hasn't watched it. She didn't watch it with me for work. So I'm excited to rewatch it with her, and I'm actually kind of champing at the bit to do it. Like, I'm, I want to do another rewatch. I think this show um, is my favorite uh, of the DCEU properties because it builds every joke, payoff, and relationship so well. I think to get to the end and have a payoff to the die beer joke, uh, you know, to actually feel for these characters, to be so connected to John Cena and have those moments. Like I think of these episodes, you know, that have the powerful musical ending, you know, James Gunn, uh, obviously centerpiece for all of his things is music, but you know, him laying on the floor after rocking out and thinking about his de- his brother dying, uh, you know, uh, home sweet home on the piano, like the way they meld the story with the actual uh, 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 score so well and build on it and the happiness of, you know, uh, everybody in the van taking the selfie and stuff like that. Like, I think this shows something really, really special. And I really, I, I love it. I think it's great. And I think it, I love it because it made me love all the characters individually. And that's why I like it more than the Suicide Squad where Suicide Squad, I think we did walk away from. Uh, and it was like, oh, I don't even know who, har- you know, uh, hardcore it is or who, uh, you know, Die Beard is or like, you know, or, or, or kind of most like they were just in there and it kind of felt like they were weird and jarring in that because there were so many people in that and clearly like they were really trying to make us care about the suicide squad the people the boots on the ground thing and they did but like even rat catcher like i didn't uh, love rat catcher the way i love the characters in this from and i mean every character i feel like honestly maybe not a um uh uh, tasty's wife or whatever but like it's just because i don't know her she was very much just set dressing to you know what the stakes were and stuff like that but every major character i think is awesome and even you know on the ride home today from the airport dropping my mom off I was running through the Peacemaker highlights and I had so many. And even then just to get to, you know, the final shot of the show, right. Of Cena out there on the porch with Eagly and then having Goff sitting there eating the last of the stuff. And then the fact that, you know, James Gunn is, you know, does what he usually does. And that's, you know, run a director's commentary on Twitter and talk about like openly that, that's the last of the gold juice from the cow. Like that's it. That's, you know, mm-hmm. like that's, that is symbolic of, you know, Goff's come there to die. And like, oh God, yeah. like, so cool. That's cool. I mean, yeah. Andy. Um, I I kind of want to make a, a comparison here that it kind of reminds me of reviewing Horizon Zero Dawn, the video game, or Horizon Forbidden West, and a lot of people in the comments being like, Andy, you just didn't get it, give it enough time. But it's like, if you're not a massive fan of Will Ferrell movies, um, watching more Will Ferrell movies isn't going to necessarily make you like him more, you know? And I think, mm-hmm. at the, at, I think at the core of it, I just never liked this cast a whole lot to begin with. Yeah. And and I think maybe the humor might have worked more if it were actors that I really dug and wanted to see more of. But when I didn't love them in the movie, that kind of gave me a good hint that I wasn't going to love eight episodes of them. Um, and that I feel like I liked them like a percentage decimal points more like as the show went on. But like I still never really loved what they were bringing to the table. And I think that's a lot of the, the, that's a lot of my sort of criticism for it. And that's all purely just subjective. It's just, you know, I wasn't a, a massive fan of them. Yeah. I don't think anything's wrong with that. Like, obviously, like, I mean, again, you, you saying you'd rather watch Loki over this is like, it's, it's, that's just a totally subjective thing. And again, I don't mean to just say that Loki is not f- a fun show. It's just not, it just didn't hit for me. Like I wanted it to hit like it, like it seemed to hit for you, but Obviously, John Cena running around in his tidy whities jumping from patio to patio and just eating shit every single time he hits is the kind what? of lowbrow humor that Nick Scarpino, get, you know, gets up in the morning for. Kev, what do you think? I mean, I, I love this show. Um, I find that, uh, I mean, I'm a big fan of, of the Marvel shows. I think that they've been great, but I don't know how much I'm drawn back to them now that I've watched them. Um, and I, there are some of them that are like, Oh, I'd love another season of Hawkeye, but like, I'm not itching for it. But then when like right now I had a couple free hours, so I sat down and I was like, I'll, I'll put this show on. Cause I have been thinking about it. And I kind of miss it. And man, like I watched three random episodes in the middle and watching it for the second time was so good. And it's just, there's so much fun. There's, uh, I, I don't know like, what it is exactly, but there's like a layer of it that just, the hu- uh, every joke pretty much gets me. I mean, there, there's a bunch of, like, a bunch of jokes that, that aren't for me or they're, you know, they're, they don't get me 100%, but like, I get a chuckle out of most things. And 
rewatching it is is so satisfying. I I love this, and I think that for me, this is one of the best superhero shows that I've ever seen. It's this and like either I I mean the humor elevates this a little bit more, but it's this and Watchmen, um, which is also um, HBO Max, yeah. where it's like wow, these are well, that was HBO. Yeah, yeah that you're, was right. HBO you're right. Proper, yeah, you're right. Yeah, 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 you're right. Now yeah. they're all the same but thing, H- Greg. It's yeah. all the same thing. So it's I I'm so blown away by that. When when we first found out this was coming, I was like, wait, those random side characters that we saw for two seconds, like I like who's hardcore and economos that like those are such yeah. weird names. And now it's like they mean something and I care about them. And it's like, wow, the power of James Gunn to do that. I'm just utterly blown away. And it's like, I wish he could do more. I hope he can do this as long as he wants to. And I hope that he does this. Um, with other characters. Yeah. And I hope he has fun with it. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's the thing too, is like you taught, it, it, it's, it's maybe a difficult thing to compare, you know, the Disney plus shows to this, because in a lot of ways he's got way more leeway, right? He can, this is a rated R show or, or TV. What is it? MA. Um, they show nudity and they show swearing that's ultra violent. I mean, that's a lot more, you have a lot more latitude with which to experiment and have some fun with. And I think some of the Disney plus shows do, but honestly, to me, the, the benchmark of the best possible superhero show is Watchmen. And I love this show. Don't get me wrong. I love Peacemaker. It's super cool, but I don't think it holds a candle to the to the quality and that and the level of like insane storytelling that Watchmen did. In my See, opinion, I it's not that you're. I I don't think you're wrong. I think Watchmen's storytelling is on another level. I think what they did, but I think their objectives were different. And I yeah. like that they aren't 100%. also hold to the same thing, right? Where I like Watchmen was a grounded, you know, air quotes or whatever for that because it's superheroes, mm-hmm. but a grounded like we're trying to make this feel like what would happen in a world where superheroes really did exist. And we were taking it seriously where peacemaker gets to be more super Making goofy and it gets Aquaman to be vigilante. Yeah. Right. And it gets, and I, I appreciate that there's that latitude. I don't want it to Absolutely. feel like, you know, to be the best superhero <clears throat> show. I, I feel like even when I say, I, I guess that's what's interesting when we sat here and we re- ran around about like, you know, or I did about like, Oh man, like MCU, I have to think and yada, yada, yada. Watchmen didn't come up. Cause I don't, I don't consider Watchmen a superhero show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a comic book. It's, it's a comic book graphic that. novel inspired sure. show. It, it, it is about superheroes. But if we were to sit here and list superhero shows, I bet I would have avoided that. I would have not even thought about that because I put that into a different category because yeah, I feel sense. like this is a comic book. And I, and I feel like the MCU shows are comic books. And I'm not trying mm-hmm. to say they're juvenile, but I think it's different in terms of where you suspend disbelief and where you go in and what you're looking for. Well, I think you put it perfectly right. I think it's it's what's your expectation going in, right? And my expectation going in with Peacemaker is like, this is going to be a silly, crazy eight-episode ride. Uh, with Watchmen, I was like, this is either going to be horrible or the next level of stuff, right? and, and it ended up being mm. next level. And I know that's not leaving a lot of space for interpretation there, but like with but Watchmen, I, I was like, we don't need, we don't need this. It's and like best series of all episode. time. Yeah, like, and then I watched the first but, episode, I was like, oh shit, I, they, see, this is something special here. That, I, that's exactly how I feel about Peacemaker. Like hearing about it happening, I, I was like, Suicide uh, Squad was cool. I Peacemaker was a character that definitely caught my attention and I was interested. But then I heard the show was coming. And I'm like, we don't need this. Yeah. Like, there's no way. And then they announced who the characters were, and we like saw that squad. And I was like, yeah, this is really weird. We don't need this. And then I saw the first episode. And I mean, we we were lucky enough that we what we saw the first three episodes, right? Or what? Well, no, I guess we saw the first. If you episode. wanted to, yeah. yeah I think yeah, we yeah. watched. I mean, I watched them one by one, but it was definitely one of those yeah. things where you watch the first episode, you're like, shit. I'm yeah, click this on is the second one. this is something yeah. like this is bigger than than what I thought it was gonna be. Mm-hmm. And I was just blown away. And that's that's the sort of like, I mean, and, and, and maybe it's unfortunate. Maybe it's just my way of thinking about the DC just in general right now, the DC universe. But, you know, you hear about like Colin Farrell getting a spinoff show for the Penguin. And I'm like, I don't know if I need that or not. But the trials and Peace- tribulations of running a club. But also, right? that's but then not, you look that's at Peacemaker the- and you're like, that could be cool. It could be yeah. it could work. And you, there's a way to make things work. Like I always say, there's anything can work if you have the right creative team behind it. And Peacemaker is a cook. perfect example of that. Where if you had told me three or four years ago, hey, John Cena is going to be this obscure character that you that personally I've never heard of before, and it's going to be an eight episode run, I'd be like, I don't want to watch that. But if the second season was out tomorrow, I would start watching it tomorrow. 
and that's where I come in with it is like with what Nick just said, obviously we've said that a million times now of just like no one would ever be excited for a Peacemaker show. And it's like, cool, even John Cena as an obscure DC character, like who would care? But it's like, oh, James Gunn is writing and directing it. And all of a sudden you're like, cool, I get it. And that makes sense now that it's an obscure character. He that is totally up his alley. And, you know, me kind of looking at the show a couple uh, months removed or whatever, like I am still enamored by it. I really enjoyed the ride the entire way through. I do think it is one of the best superhero shows we've ever gotten. And I just love that we're getting to a point that the shows are more similar to the movies where we're so far past the early Fantastic Four X-Men movies, Daredevil level of superhero movies for the TV shows. Like we're, we got through all of the early shows that like, were like whatever the um, uh, Gotham's and the, you know, that type of stuff to get to this point where it's like, Gotham. you know, we're just letting people have creative vision and control over the stories they're telling. And I, I, in the same way that I equally love winter soldier and Thor Ragnarok, and those could not be more different movies, but that's kind of like, yeah, sure, they're both comic book superhero movies, but they are so radically different. And I love that we can get radically different things and genres and um, types of storytelling throughout all of this. But there is still the the rules of you're in a universe and you're playing in that universe. And I think that that's one of the greatest strengths of Peacemaker is that it played with the rules of the DCEU. As stupid as they are, as messed up and shitty as they've gotten over the years, like – James Gunn used that playground and he played with it mm -hmm. well. And it, this show wrapping up with the Justice League cameo and it being as awesome as it was, I think is kind of something that sets this show apart. And almost when I start comparing it to the MCU shows, um, just because they're shows, I look at it and I'm like, they, they just did the thing that a lot of the MCU shows so far haven't done, which is just completely deliver the most over the top uh, outcome of cameos and surprises, mm -hmm. right? With yeah. the Justice League. We haven't had the Avengers in an MCU thing. I don't think it's necessarily that means it's better than the other. I think that it's just like they, I think that James Gunn completed the vision of this project almost as good as it possibly could have been done. Yeah. Going obscure, going full on James Gunn, which, you know, for better or worse, it's not going to hit for everybody. But for the people it hits for, it's going to really hit. And to then also have that level of connection to the, the universe, to introduce so many characters and ideas and dumb things and make them canon to this universe that, like, we all care about because it's either funny or expands it in a way that's interesting, to then top that off with also including elements that we have watched at this point, what was it, 11 different movies um, that – Honestly, most of them are bad, <laughs> but yeah. like to even take some of that bad and try to turn it into good, I thought they did a great job. I, I do think that looking at the shows, talking about a lot of the MCU shows, even like I think the shows get a bad rap overall, where I still think that we haven't gotten one of the shows that is like, holy shit, this is the best thing ever. This is like top tier MCU, uh, because I think all of them have some element that we look at and are like, oh, I think WandaVision was so close. And that finale and that final kind of bit really kind of dropped the ball on it. I just don't like that we look at that and judge it as if that show wasn't good because of sure. that. When sure. we look at movies and how often are we like, oh, yeah, the third act of that Marvel movie was whatever. But like we don't judge it as overall a failure because of that, because of the runtime, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think that like looking at the shows, I feel like the, the MCU shows, with the exception of probably what if, more often than not were great than like okay but we look back at them as the lowest common denominator of what they they offered i say all that to to put in perspective that this show didn't have that to me that this show just nailed it this show committed to what it was trying to do and really did something special that is more similar to something like the boys but where i think it even exceeds the boys is that it plays in a universe that we know and it used that universe mm -hmm. we really gotta commend james mm -hmm. gunn for doing that because like he took the worst of the worst, the DCU. I'm sorry. It's the worst universe we have and did something cool with it, you know, and, then, and I yeah. really appreciate that. And that's what, I, you know, and, and I think that's important, right? Because I think an, an analog to this for me, kind of, I mean, not because it was running poorly, but uh, this, this show is kind of like a disruptor and, the, and it makes me kind of think of Deadpool. It makes me think of like, hey, we've got this sort of like status quo that's happening in the MCU. And then we've got this weird offshoot Fox movie that that ha that came out that's just so radically different and kind of 
do, doing like taking the genre and twisting it and, and showing everyone else that, Hey, there's a different way to do this. And that's important. Like it's important for, for creators to come in and say, look, I've got this medium. How best can I utilize this? And that's where my disappointment comes in with the, with, with the Marvel shows is that I felt I want vision coming out of the gate. And I know it wasn't supposed to be the first one, but coming out of the gate, I was like, Oh, this is cool. This is utilizing this format to tell a different type of story that maybe people don't want to go pay, you know, the, the ticket price for a theater and sit for two hours to see that this is a lot more introspective this is a lot more about someone's inner turmoil and it's and it's having fun with the visuals and the genres and all that stuff and this is cool but then by the time we get to hawkeye i was like uh this is like a cw show and it's fine and no, it's, it's not it's, though no you I didn't mean, watch enough cw not. i mean it's yeah, i mean it's I, way better I, I, will I, I will say this i'll say this i mean i haven't watched it in a long time but i think flash season one and two are better than hawkeye no, 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 no. Flash no. season I, one's really good, but I mean, it's yeah, really good. I'm not, I'm, not ready, I'm not ready to go to the mat yet, yeah, but I, that Flash season I, one is real good. I don't think it's. I liked the first four seasons of Flash, but like Hawkeye was better. It was Hawkeye was Hawkeye was. I, I mean, I just I don't know. To me, none of them are none of them are hitting a mark where I'm like, well, these are great. Like I I, I think they're fine. I think they're serviceable, and I think they're interesting shows to watch, and they they definitely are entertaining, but. I don't think of them in the same category that I think of even half of the the MCU movies. Like I wouldn't they, they, like if you were to say Nick, you could watch two more seasons of Hawkeye or the next Spider Man movie. They're like, come on, it's a no brainer, man. Watch yeah, the next Spider Man. I mean, movie. It, that you know, I like I don't that. even. Yeah, if someone was like, hey Nick, in order to watch the next Spider Man movie, you never can watch another Disney Plus show again. I'd be like, well, that's a no brainer either. I want the Spider Man yeah. movie. So having said that, I just want to put out there like the point I'm trying to make is Nick, if we look back and watch you on screencast week to week, you're much higher on it until there's a bad point, and then that's what sticks with you. And like I think it's, that's kind of the the issue, actually, especially even was, when we when we rank them it's like we well i think that tend was, to rain mean, most of them high i could be wrong about wandavision but i think i was pretty high on that show and then the last point yeah it was i mean it sucks they didn't mm -hmm. stick the landing and that just kind of became the the worry for the mcu shows because if you'll remember that was the same criticism we all had of falcon winter soldier we were like okay we're kind of we're kind of no, we kind of got to the end and it was the it was deflated by these yeah, the flag smashers was. and they were like just kind of generic and stuff like that but, i don't think it was just the endings though i think like I think they played with expectations in a way to where we thought something more was going to happen. And the fact that the things we wanted to happen didn't kind of you retroactively look back at those other episodes that you may have enjoyed at the time because you thought they were, they were going, going to mean somewhere. something bigger. Yeah. And then you go, ah, oh, that is kind of a disappointment. But overall, like I think WandaVision is a much more creative and better show than Peacemaker. Um, I think Loki is the highest mark that they can hit TV show wise and even better than a lot of movies. And that's why we ranked it higher than a lot of better of the movies. I think storytelling wise, it is on another level of all of these shows. Um, and I think it was the most consistent all the way through. I think Peacemaker is incredibly consistent as well. However, it's just like incredibly like six out of 10. Good for me, like good, a good TV show. It never really hit any terrible low points. But I, I rarely felt like, God damn, this is this is a must watch type of thing right now um, with this show, and that's just I, how I felt. I want to keep this conversation going, but real quick, let's go to a word from our sponsors. Shout out to Me Undies. We've all been there trying on clothes in a dressing room, and everything makes you look like three kids hiding in a coat. Finding the perfect size is annoying. That's why Me Undies makes undies, bralettes, and loungewear to fit just right. Y'all know how long I've loved Me Undies. I am often wearing the shirt, the lounge pants, the undies, the socks, like I'm doing right now. If I was a cartoon character, this would just be my, my outfit. It would just be all Me Undies. I love it because of the soft micromodal fabric and because it does fit really well. Me Undies knows that comfort starts with the perfect size and fit. That's why they wear test all sizes from extra small to 4xl for everything they make they've got different cuts for different butts and everything from bold colors to fun adventurous prints so the world can be a comfier place for every booty <laughs> uh, me on these promises if you're not comfortable with any product for any reason you can return your order for a full refund within 45 days me on these has a great offer for y'all for any first time purchasers you can get 15 percent off and free shipping right to your door to get 50 percent off your first order free shipping and 100 percent satisfaction guarantee Go to meundies.com slash kind of funny. That's meundies.com slash kind of funny. 
Shout out to DoorDash. Sometimes pulling into your driveway after a trip to the grocery store only to realize you forgot one key ingredient for dinner kind of feels like the end of the world. But with DoorDash, you can get the groceries and household essentials you need or a backup meal from your favorite local restaurant delivered in under an hour. Desperately craving a late night snack or just want to stock up for the week with DoorDash, get it all in one app. We've been using DoorDash forever. You hear us on the Kind of Funny podcast, always talking about the different taquerias we're ordering from, the different burger places we're ordering from. We are super happy and we love to just get the food delivered right to us. For a limited time, you guys can get 25% off and zero delivery fees on your first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app and enter code KINDA FUNNY. That's 25% off up to a $10 value and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter code KINDA FUNNY. Don't forget that's code KINDA FUNNY for 25% off your first order with DoorDash. Subject to change terms apply now here's the thing i'm gonna throw an option out there for all you boys we're, we're gonna vote right here on what we do do we go through and do the do the plot for this or do we keep this conversation going and just talk about the state of superhero tv shows and and what we kind of expect from it all I we'll rank we it on a different going. episode well, I, I think we should do the plot i think we should right, do the plot cool. yeah anyone else greg miller i don't want to do, do the plot no okay Greg, no, we're you. voting. Sorry, we're voting. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. This is well. You remember we had a conversation before we go that I was going to try a new thing where I read the plots from Wikipedia this time around for each episode because I don't think we've nailed the plot before. But I don't think that I think it also kind of speaks to us having not nailed what the shows for recapping this universes are right. Because I'd imagine if you're watching DC in review for this, you probably watched us do Peacemaker reviews one by one as we went. So you already know we're super high on it. And you already watched it. And you're already there, right? And mm-hmm. I feel like we're already hitting points about what we loved and what we didn't love. So I feel like it might be yeah a bit of well-worn territory to come in. I think we also, I mean, we could just do it now, the vote and then continue the conversation. Cause I think I've already made it pretty clear. I'm voting number one on this. Yeah. I, I, I'm down to do that. You want to, let, let's do a little ragu bagu. Do, 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 ragu. do, 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 bagu. What's up, fuck faces? It's time for your favorite <laughs> podcast within a podcast, Ragu Baggy, where we rank all the villains of the DC EU cinematic universe against each other and see what happens. Uh, right now, volume seven is what I list the DC EU as, and it looks like this. Number one, Starro slash Waller slash Corta Maltese from the one, the only James Gunn Suicide Squad. Then number two is Black Mask and Zaz from the old Birds of Prey. Number three is Zod from Man of Steel. Number four is Dooms slash Lex from, of course, Batman v Superman. Number five is Slep- Steppy slash Darkseid uh, from the Snyder Cut. Number six <laughs> is Maxwell Lord slash Cheetah from Wonder Woman 1987, oh, 87, 88. 82, 84, 84, 84. <laughs> 87, 88, 89, number, se- number, sev- number seven is Thad. Number eight is Sir Pat. Number Thad? nine is Ocean Ma- Thad. T H A D is from we Shazam. Of course, uh, the, the villain we all remember from the one we can't wait to get another sequel to. Shazam, everybody. Eight, I mean, Shazam come on. Hater. Shazam was much better than most of the crap they're pushing out, <laughs> right? Yeah, I enjoyed, I enjoyed just, just Yeah, just, it was know, way more enjoyable than Batman versus Superman. Go, of course, Kevin's got to come right for me. I've never said anything. I didn't even bring up his obsession with Govy lights today, but he's got to come for my eyeballs. Uh, you got to come Miller, for my fucking eyeballs. You know, turn your lights pink. Let's see that. Come on, let's see pink from your lights. Huh? Yeah, go turn the dead Kevin, lights. Don't pink. let him get you, Kevin. Don't let him get it you. Hurts You're on the side so of, much. You're on the side of right. Kevin. Look at You're that. On the side Look at that right. pink. So pink. That's a purple, a lavender at best. Like an off white. Echo, turn the den lights purple that's best echo part. turn the den lights lavender echo what's the definition of a golden piece <laughs> just white a little bit echo of turn the it. den lights fuchsia kevin i thought you would have brought up the golden pea picture that i submitted by the way you thought oh wow oh my god andy thank andy you. <laughs> i know thank you did you google number, this or number eight is no, sir, pat, like said. It. sir pat i believe that's from wonder woman right Ah, oh, no, that's the wrong thing. There it is. Oh, I don't even know. Yeah. Sir Pat? Yeah. Sir Patrick Timmy, Stewart? Tim, you, you seeing this? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Number nine was movie. Ocean Master wow. slash manga. Great. Great. Yeah. Great. <laughs> is this what... <laughs> I feel like we all owe. I feel like we should Manta, have to Manta. Manta. apologize no, to Tim. Manta, yeah. no, I, I just got a slack from Nick Scarpino that says, I'm so sorry about this podcast. I know you work hard on these. 
Again, trying so hard to make some semblance of co like cohesion with this. I'm I do, fucking pull out a golden tea picture. No, I try hard, but you know what? It is weird. We're trying to find the the, the grounding and the footing for uh, the TV shows. I will say that a lot of people have been uh, rewatching and review from the beginning recently. I've been seeing some oh. people tweet at us, and uh, someone was like, "Yo, it's crazy that they didn't find the format uh, for in review until like." seven movies in like mm. there was no plot there was no shit and even then like we've had a lot of changes and stuff so we're still trying to figure out what the tv Pretty shows it's, it's a, like. the tv you know ones make I mean? it difficult but what yeah. i want to do is have nick apologize to me because this is like fucking at the end of the natural when he hits the baseball and the lights all explode nick would be the guy who goes over to the stadium owner and apologizes for the fucking lights getting knocked out yeah, stadium lights owners is like i just watched robert redford hit a home run i don't remember the natural well he did something <laughs> that was amazing and it blew out the lights that's i don't mind oh, yeah. this is cool what about all the people in the stands picking fucking glass shards out of their face <laughs> you're gonna apologize to them for your home run good for you they, i just love greg saying much. ocean master of manga <laughs> 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 Remember that we've gone through stuff. we've gone through with the DCE or I'm sorry with the MCU we've gone through and moved to a Google document that's actually organized and well written. We're still here in my my funny notes so that whatever we put it in as is what it was going to be. So I'm sorry that it's Ocean Man's Master slash Manga. <laughs> number ten, Steppenwolf uh, from the Bad Justice League, and then number eleven, Enchantress and her baby bro from, from the, the Bad Justice, Justice League. League. Yeah. <laughs> Versus the Good Justice League. Remember that yeah. one? <laughs> You remember that yeah. one? Remember how you all were like, I guess it was pretty good. Remember that? Well, yeah, if no. you've got like 15 I hours know. to tell a story, <laughs> suddenly yeah. Cyborg is a more compelling character. I just, I, mean, I, just, compelling. I, just, I just want it out there. That, uh, yeah, pretty good. It's still ranked number seven on the list out of 11 <laughs> of these movies. So, whatever. Uh, but w let's just start the conversation talking like, about. I'm, so I'm just villains. watching Greg's face. <laughs> <laughs> the villains of peacemaker let's talk about them let's talk about if we liked or disliked and then we can try to apply it to this abomination of a list so we're talking so, about the butterflies mm -hmm. golf okay. specifically right the leader, leader of the, of the butterflies, butterflies. Mm -hmm. kind of turned all the butter bad Mama's or all the butterflies dance. bad and the white Are we including dragon? yeah, it was white the white dragon, dragon. yeah. you gotta have Which, here too. okay he went trivia some facts for you guys. Some fun facts. Remember when we had Facts of the Furious? That was a wow. fun time. That was cool. Uh, Nick, this is not the first time that John Cena and Robert Patrick have been on screen together. It is, in fact, the third time. Can you name the other two times? The Marine 1 and 2. The Marine in 2006 yeah, was the first there's... time they were together. Okay. And I'm really, really sad, Nick, that you don't know the answer for the second one. Wait, was he in a fa was he in Fast and Furious? No, it was a TV show. A TV show. Shit. They made like an appearance it. together Psych. on an episode of a TV show. Oh, on Psych? Psych. Yes. That's wow. right, because he played he played Maggie Lawson's brother on like two episodes of Psych. He was like a secret yeah. agent. Wow, we're show. coming up on the 20 year know, anniversary of the Marine, huh? Yeah, Maria, don't sleep well, on the Marine. Coming up. Fun we are, yes, Andy, we are coming up on the 20th anniversary in four years. <laughs> it's us. Well, I don't know, course, our planning. Start planning right now. Andy, 16 also, years also, ago, man. We're also coming up on the 100th anniversary of the Marine. <laughs> <laughs> we're I thought so the villains were handled very well in this show. I feel like the the twists and turns were probably my most exciting uh, point of it, where the, uh, what was his name, Mern? Uh, being mm -hmm. a uh, the butterfly, butterfly. like that yeah. being a, a kind of like end of the episode cliffhanger was, I think, really engaging for us. Um, the fact that we actually saw Robert Patrick get suited up as the White Dragon, like obviously his storyline was already compelling, being the father of John Cena and then being in jail, having his whole kind of like group of like assholes kind of be uh, ready to support him there. That was compelling. But then to get to him actually in the suit and it looked cool for a TV show and have him fly through and fuck shit up. And then yeah. to have him uh, get shot by John Cena. I think mm -hmm. the, the villain plot overall was very well handled, um, especially when you add in the, the butterfly side of things with the cow and all that. Like it was simultaneously one of those small contained stories that we all love to see so much when it's not just a giant blue beam from the sky but it also had kind of like bigger stakes of like if they don't handle this it could turn into a worldwide fucking right. event so i thought that the, overall it was very very good I, i'd put it on the higher end yeah I'd agree. I, I agree i think it's like one of the more well thought out things about the show uh in that it kind of gave john cena 
motivation and a lot it made his character a lot more well-rounded um in a way that watching the suicide squad movie you would have never assumed that that was even there uh, mm -hmm. because we don't get a whole lot of time with those characters um but yeah i would uh well i guess in the way that the other characters who has got that got that treatment we got that here and so yeah i think it i think it definitely kind of it feels well-rounded and it makes sense for his character to go through what he's going through because we see it happen it's not just something that's told to us so yeah i would say it's probably one of the better developed things about the show Craig, i agree i think you're all nailing the points i would make right and so then you start comparing it where you want to go with it. I don't think it's when you look at the, I would say for me, this is a top two or actually mm -hmm. this is a top three where and right now that would mean that it's got Stara, Waller, Corda Maltese, and then black mask and Zazaz in it. Right. And so when I start putting it there, it gets interesting. And I think it's the fact that those villains have faces you can immediately think to and jump to, right? Whereas the butterfly is more of a nebulous threat and how they go. But then the fact that, you know, golf gets in the, the cop or whatever, and the cop's performance is so good. And how do you put that in there? Let alone the, I remember the Patrick, dragon. right? Yeah. 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 I'm not trying to take away from him. Yeah, no, I mean, you're making good points though. It's like, I do think that we're getting to, to a level where I, I think with what you're saying here, now that you've said what the top uh, spots are, yeah. I do think for me, it, it's, it's, is it one or two? Like is I do think the James Gunn's villains are are higher than than Zaz and Birds of yeah, Prey, which I, I did really enjoy. Um, yeah, but you, I, you know, I mean, you McGregor's performance is so good, right? Exactly. And that's that's like, where you get up. Cut. Is it like is he a great villain or is you McGregor just fucking killing it? Right? Yes. And, ew, what and is that? A snot yeah. bubble? Take it off. <laughs> and that's where I am. Like, if we had, if like I'm I'm not gonna try to take anything away from Robert Patrick, but I think like you're about you, to. I think if he had better characterization and if I think if like well we think of some of the weaker MCU villains that we ranked higher because we love their acting and we love their screen presence, I feel like this this would easily be number one. But I do think that this is a better compelling character than Ewan McGregor's villain in Birds of Prey. But I enjoyed watching what he was doing on screen probably sure. more than this. And it it all comes out of like how heavily do you weigh you know, the the actor and the performance over how it affects the story and how it, can, you know, kind of what's up. Yeah, well, I will say with that, like I, I'm in, in agreement with you, but because we did vote the Starro and all of them as number one, like I feel now it kind of becomes the conversation of like, okay, where does this compare to that? I you think know? I think it's a number two behind them. Yeah. I think Starro is super so. cool and different as a monster. And I, you know, I didn't see them using that way. And I really did love it. And I love the whole like backstory of Star obviously being in space. And like, I was happy in the stars. Like I was happy looking at the stars and then, I, and then to pair that with Amanda Waller, who I think is so great. You know what I mean? Viola Davis is always the bright spot of any Amanda Waller performance or any suicide squad, no matter what it is. She's fantastic. I think she was great in it. And I think that's where, for me, they have both the monster and then the face attached to it for the villain that I like more than I like with butterflies, who I think were great and cool and uh, were, you know, another bright spot of the show. And were and scary. They were scary, right? It was a real threat, and I like the powers they gave, but I would put them at number two. And I, and I really enjoyed Amanda Waller. <clears throat> I, although I don't think that there was, like, a whole lot of depth there other than villain being villain, but I do enjoy the sort of, like, her kind of commanding John Cena to kill um, Rick Flag. Like, I, I enjoyed that yeah. kind of twist of being like, hey, this is my job sort of thing. So I, I would probably put them in number two. Yeah. But with that, I think I would put them in number one because I did not like the John Cena uh, killing Rick Flag thing. I thought that was handled really poorly. And turning Peacemaker into what one of joke. the villains of uh, Suicide Squad was one of the weaker moments of the movie to me. Uh, and I think that this show dug themselves out of a really difficult place to start from. Uh, but I think that they did that with humor more so than actual logical storytelling, uh, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. But I think when we're talking about the villains of both overall, I think that the villains in this didn't do anything wrong except not having a face uh, that we are totally, totally behind. But um, I, I'd go number one. But I do think it is it is pretty close. Yeah, I I think that. I mean, for me, they had a face, but it was one that changed because, like, Goff, I feel like, even at the end, like, the, the the way we see things ending with Goff, it, like, it hits. And I think you guys are also forgetting Judo Master. 
Oh, you're God. you're fucking right. I, we are you dumb sons of bitches. Uh, it's one easy to forget. You just forgot about him. It's not our fault. We forgot about him. Number one with the Cheeto. That's what I say. Click. <laughs> what? Come on. Wow. So good. I, I mean, it, like, it's so funny because every time we saw Judo Master, I was so taken away by like the performance and like what they have this guy doing because he's so good yeah it's so (laughs) bizarre but like i'm like yeah fuck him up you know and and that's judo master like i'm I'm cheering for judo master to win absolutely yeah absolutely and he always missed half this discussion so i do apologize but we're trying to put them either at number two or number one on the ragu bagu list yeah Yeah, do you agree with that what was the why why not Number one is Starro, Amanda Waller, and Cork de Malfice from James Gunn with the Suicide Squad. Yeah, I would say so, only because of Robert Patrick. I, I really think you that put them he, above. You put him in at number one. I would because I think he's such a. I think oh. he is that the concept of him is super scary. Right? The concept of someone who's like a white supremacist getting superpowers to me is a a really grounded, real world kind of threat that that is terrifying. And especially when you add on that added layer of like him being also an abusive father. Um, that to me kind of cinches it. I think that's a lot more interesting than just Amanda Waller being Amanda Waller for the sake of being Amanda Waller. Starro was cool, don't get me wrong, but we only really see Starro for like a few minutes in the movie when he when he busts out. But so awesome, it's, cool. it's, it's it is it's awesome. His eyeball. It's, it's super cool. Um, but uh, but you know, I would I would actually disagree with Tim a little bit. Like I I like the. I like the killing of Rick Flag in the in in the Suicide Squad because I think it is the impetus of the the main journey that John Cena's character goes on in Peacemaker. I think that's the whole point mm-hmm. of the show is for him to, to reconcile that. And so I almost think like, I mean, obviously that was planned by James Gunn, but if he had planned that knowing that he was going to try to ha- like write a redemption arc for for P- for a Peacemaker in this series, I think that's a pretty that's a pretty big stroke of genius to me. I put him at number one. I say number two. Let's vote. Two, two, one. It's one. One. One it there is. You go. Ladies and gentlemen. The ones you have now. It. The ones have it. The butterflies go to the top. Butterflies and Judo Master go to the top. Thank you. Of the DC And the White Dragon. dragon. The white Dragon, bro. White Dragon, yeah. So we need to remember that. Down. Yeah, so that the <laughs> next movie we get to, which is probably going to be... Flash? No. Black Aquaman. Adam. <laughs> Black Adam. We got to remember in case that one had <laughs> the power <laughs> dynamic number one shift. spot. It's Hard shifted, dynamic man. Shift. It's shifted. Andy, hit me with haiku and review. Yeah, it's a great point right there, Tim. <laughs> you, <laughs> you, you brought up a segment that we do, and we do that segment right, every that's show, great, Tim. Great Tim, segment. great point. That's a great, great point, point Tim. You did it. You nailed Thank it. We're proud of you. Yeah, yeah, I'm you excited have... to hear this song that's coming for... very soon, I'm sure. It's, very, uh, it's very... almost here. Soon, seventh yeah. syllables in the middle. <laughs> you need five for the first and last line. If you're not poetic, no need to fret. And haikus don't need to rhyme. Haiku in review. Haiku in review. You can go to patreoncom slash funny to write your review in haiku form, just like my boy Hargot did. He says, "Vigilante is a whole lot of syllables." I have no more left. <laughs> Peacemaker <laughs> is jacked. Looks like Die Beard is real sad. Aquaman fucks fish. <laughs> yeah, he does. Okay. okay. So thank you for that. Oh, I you really that enjoyed the thing? vigilante thing. Uh, I did. My boy Brandon BD, baby. Talking Can shit you... to Jason Momoa. Can you explain? Asking him what, what type of fish it was. Yeah, he's like, he's on a red carpet, this guy that I don't know or whatever. Yeah, and he gets Jason Momoa to walk over finally. And he's like, sorry, real quick. What kind of fish was it? And Momo has this moment. He's like, oh, God. And he just walks away. <laughs> and he comes back oh, later. He's like, that was a good one. That was a good one. That's really funny. <laughs> now it's time to rank the DCEU. Cap, can you please bring this up? 16. Currently, at number one, we have The Suicide Squad, uh, 2021. Number two, Birds of Prey. Number three, Wonder Woman. Number four, Shazam. Number five, Batman. V Superman Dawn of Justice. Number six, Man of Steel. Number seven, The Snyder Cut. Number eight, Aquaman. Number nine, Wonder Woman 1984. Number 10, Justice League. And number 11, <laughs> Suicide Squad. Genius. The first one. Uh, where do we want to rank Peacemaker? Number one. Yeah, where I'm going back on is it, is it number one or number two for me? Um, and Nick Collins, it's number one. I do think I enjoyed this. I mean, I really enjoyed the Suicide Squad 2021. I thought he did a great job with that. But I think this builds off of it. And like I said before, I think it just 
is proof positive that you could use that 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 limited series genre or that eight run uh, episode genre in a different way. And I, I hope that I just feel like this is a more special thing than the Suicide Squad. In Suicide Squad, the movie was like, okay, hey, guess what? We're trying to write the course. In this one, it's like, oh, HBO Max. This is what HBO Max original like comic book genre movies or shows can be. So I think in that regard, I'd probably put it. I think I put it number one. I think I enjoyed it more overall than the Suicide Squad. I'm probably the only one who's going to rank it at number two. Uh, I just really like Suicide Squad movie. Great movie. Um, no one's taking would, away from it. I would put that over like this would be really high up even on the MCU list for me um, because I just enjoyed it that much. And I think it is I think it's the best of James Gunn um, where I feel like everything is kind of reined in and you have people maybe helping him decide what jokes are better and what jokes to kind of keep in. I think it's like the best version of him uh, along with, you know, Guardians one and two. Um, I just really love that damn movie. So I will leave that at number one and put this at number two. Cap, you already said one, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I love Suicide Squad. Like, legitimately love that movie. Uh, but I think that this took me on a ride that, that very few shows have, and I think that I, I would put it at number one for that reason. This is James Gunn's universe. We're just living in it, man. I, I love the movie, and I love the show. I do think the show is number one for me because I think <clears throat> Suicide Squad, the movie, was fantastic, but it was kind of expected. I think that this kind of... Uh, did something for me that was unexpected when you know I said a lot of this stuff already but James Gunn really went full in on what this was it's a tv show it's not a movie let's treat it like a tv show let's end every episode with a cliffhanger that makes us compelled and excited to watch next week let's have some things to theorize like they just he nailed making a tv show so uh because of that I would put it at number one and that gives it the ranking of number one peacemaker number two suicide squad number three birds of prey number four wonder woman number five shazam number six batman v superman number seven man of steel number eight snyder cut number nine aquaman number 10 wonder woman 1984 number 11 justice league and number 12 suicide squad the original one uh we will return to the dceu eventually uh, it'll be <laughs> one day year. yeah one day uh supposedly it'll be uh when black adam comes out but i'm still not entirely sure about that um but until next time i want you to know next week we're returning to the mcu in review where we are going to uh talk about the marvel one shot so everybody your homework for the week is to go on disney plus and there's a playlist i think it's like three playlists down um with all of them it's about an hour of content total so it's gonna be a fun time uh it goes all the way back to some of the earliest moments in the mcu i'm pretty sure the first one shot uh takes place around the time of iron man 2 and the last one is Thor Ragnarok. So we're about to go through a, a, a journey here. I think there's three Thor Ragnarok ones. So I'm very excited about that because I have never seen them. Uh, but watch them all. We're going to talk about them next week. Greg will give his final updated ranking of the MCU with Eternals. We'll, we'll finally be able to vote on that one. Um, and then, like I said, Morbius is the week after that. And Greg will finally rest everything. He'll come in. <laughs> He'll vote for Venom too, so we can finally Venom. get it on the list, you know? Uh, but until next time, I love you all. <laughs>